two equal and opposite forces that are not collinear create what is called a force couple. Let us find the moment created by the forces in the system about an arbitrary point O. Remember that the magnitude of F1 is equal to the magnitude of F2. We'll call this F for simplification. Let's call the perpendicular distance from O to F1's line of action A. And the perpendicular distance from O to F2's line of action would be A plus another additional distance D, which is the perpendicular distance between F1 and F2. The moment from the set of the forces in the system about point O is equal to the magnitude of F1, which is F, times a and the direction can be determined from the right hand rule in this case it would be positive k hat plus the moment due to f2 which would be f times the perpendicular component which is a plus d and using the right hand rule we find the direction is negative k hat simplifying this we find that the moment is f times a minus a minus d k hat. What we find is that the distance from the point O to F1 does not matter. And the moment is F times negative D k hat. And also the magnitude of the moment is simply F times the perpendicular distance between the two forces. What's interesting about this is that we could move the point O to any point in the system. And what we find is the magnitude of the moments of these forces about another point O would also be F times the perpendicular distance between the two forces. This implies that the magnitude of the moment about any point in this system is F times D and does not depend on the choice of moment center. Another interesting thing about a force couple is the fact that since F2 is equal to the negative of F1, we have that the resultant force on the system is equal to F1 plus F2, but this is equal to F1 minus F1, which equals zero. Therefore, the moment of a couple is arbitrary of any moment center that you choose in the system, and the resultant force on the system is zero. What we've just observed about couples is two important points. The first point being that the moment from a couple is not dependent on a specific moment center. The moment couple's magnitude is equal to the magnitude of the force of each vector of the couple times the perpendicular distance between the force couple. That implies that we can change the magnitude of the moment by increasing the force or by increasing the distance between the forces. This does not depend on the moment center. The resultant force from a force couple is zero. In a 2D free body diagram, the moment from a couple is represented by a curled arrow. In the 3D free body diagram, the moment from a couple is represented by a double-headed arrow. An extremely important concept in statics is the concept of equivalent loads. Here we're given a system with a force F acting at A. Without altering the system at all, I can add an equivalent force F at point O and an equal and opposite force F at point O. These two systems are equal because I haven't added any force or any resultant force to the system. Note that this force cancels out the force right here so that the force on the system is still F at A. The interesting thing about this is that what I've introduced here is a force couple. We can see that this force at F is equal and opposite to this force at A. Since they're non-collinear, this creates a force couple. The magnitude of this force couple is given by the perpendicular distance between the two force components.
we can replace these two forces in the force couple by a moment m whose magnitude is given by the magnitude of f times the perpendicular distance between these two forces. The force that's left over is the force f at O. What we have done is replace the force F at A with the same force F at O, but an additional moment couple has to be added. This can be understood because if we simply moved the force F at A to O, we would not capture the moment caused about O from the force F at A. So we must represent it as a moment couple plus the force F at O. These three are equivalent loads. Let's revisit a problem that we previously solved. Remember that we found the moment from the force F about the point O was negative 356 newton meters in the z hat direction. And the force in components was negative 400 newtons x hat minus 400 root 3 newtons y hat. What would be an equivalent load from this force? If we were to move or translate the force F from B to O, what we have is that force F would no longer cause any moment about O. Since the line of action of F is going through O, therefore the position vector from O to the line of action of F is zero. So R cross F would be zero, causing no more moment. To make this an equivalent load, all we have to do is place the previously calculated moment or moment couple in the system. This is now an equivalent load. In this example, we're given a system with multiple loads, and we want to find the moment about different points in the system. So what is the moment of the loads in the system about point A? It's equal to the summation of all the moments of the forces in the system. So we have the, a moment caused by force 1, a moment caused by force 2 about A. Also, we see the moment couple acting at A, so we'll have to add that. What about the moment couple acting at B? Remember that a moment couple is independent of the point which it acts about. Therefore, the moment due to M2 at any point in this system will be equivalent to the moment M2 at B. So we have to add it in. The moments due to all the loads acting on the system about point A is 102 newtons. As an exercise, calculate what the moments about this system is at point C and the moments of the loads in the system about point B.